Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a 2014, it's a Hyundai Elantra. We're going to be changing the front and the rear brakes. Uh, I did the left front already. I'm going to bring you over now. I'm going to show you the right front because the right front is the one that's actually making the noise. So I just want to show you what the noise actually is so you know what's going on. Uh, we are going to replace the rotors versus doing uh, just a pad slap or, or, or machining the rotors. We are going to change them because it's a significant rust lip on the, uh, on the rotor itself. Uh, we are going to change the hardware kit at the same time because the hardware is where the actual brake pad touches into. And if it doesn't slide properly, it's going to stay prematurely applied and it's going to wind up wearing out the new brake pads or causing the new brake pads to start to squeal. So let me bring you up there. I'll show you what the finished product looks like. I'm going to show you what kind of tools you're going to need and then we're going to get started. Like I said, we're going to do the front first and then we're going to come in the back and we'll do the back. So uh, come on up there and we'll, we're going to talk about what we're going to do. Okay, this is an example of what kind of tools you're going to need. Uh, you're going to need a, a light so you can see what you're doing, obviously. Um, you're going to need something like this, a driver to remove the screws that actually hold the rotor to the hub itself. You're going to need something, maybe a file or some sandpaper to clean up the, uh, the mounting bracket as well as the, um, the hub assembly. Something to support the caliper while it's hanging so you're not, you're not hanging it by the brake hose itself a hammer, um, an assortment of sockets is needed, but the ones I'm using is actually a 14 millimeter and a 17 millimeter. We're gonna need a thin um, wrench like this to hold the slide pins when we try to screw them back in in case they rotate. A big screwdriver or a little pry bar to push the pistons back in. Something to reset the brake piston back into the bore if we need to do that. And uh, a driver like this to remove the brake um, screws, the Phillips head screws to hold the rotor to the hub. Uh, we are going to change the rotor like I said. We're going to change the hardware and of course we're going to change the brake pads. We're going to need a disc um, or something like this to actually clean off the, um, the rust that's on the, uh, the, the, bearing, the hub bearing itself or the hub I should say. And of course we're going to need some brake cleaner to clean off any kind of uh, oily substance that's on the rotor during the shipping. And that's it. So uh, this is what we're going to do. First thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to take out these screws right here. These screws are really tight. If you get on here with a screwdriver or even a driver, you're going to try to get these out and you're going to strip them and you're going to have a problem getting them out. Take a couple of seconds and just do what I'm going to show you to do and you won't have a problem taking them out. If you do, then I'll, sh I'll explain to you what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to drill these out, or you're going to need to get on here with a, fo with, a, uh, with a very sharp chisel and try to get it to rotate out. But we'll, we'll deal with that as it comes along. We're going to actually come over here, and we're going to uh, come up underneath the bottom right here. And we're going to push in this piston right back inside here. We're going to push the piston back in all the way. Hang on a second here. Let's stick our light up there so we can see what we're doing. Uh, inside here, we're going to put the, um, the, uh, the, the small little pry bar or screwdriver in so we can push that piston back into the bore all the way. And then we're going to take this off, the uh, caliper, that's a 14 millimeter. And of course, that's a 14 millimeter. And then these up underneath here, these are 17 millimeters. We're going to take those out too. So, all right, let's get set up and uh, let's get started. Okay, I'm hoping you can see that. What we're going to do is take a driver like this. You go up on these, these screws right here, I'll show you real quick, because what happens is you try to get on here with a screwdriver and they don't turn. They're really tight. You, one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to strip them out. So you take a driver like this, you put it on the, uh, the Phillips head screw, and you hit it pretty firmly. Oops. Okay. Same thing here. And now sometimes you can get it out like that. Okay? Just take your time, bang on it a little bit. What you're going to do too is I'm going to show you this real quick. When you're taking out this screw, you're not going to hit it straight on like that. You're going to hit it a little bit of an angle like this because you don't want to damage the Phillips head part of the screw right here. All right, so you're going to hit it around the outside edges right there. 
same thing like this, and they come right out. Now, you'll also notice that I use something like this is actually as a driver, because the uh, the driver itself, sometimes you, you try to get it out with a screwdriver and it don't come out. You can put this driver on, and it's an impact driver. What happens is you take a, a, a hammer like this, and you hit it, and when that happens, this piece here rotates and pushes in at the same time, and you get that screw out. We don't need it for this particular job, because by using the driver like this, we were able to loosen it up to get it to the point where it comes right off without a problem like that. All right, we are going to lubricate these, just so you know, before we put them back in. But for now, we're going to put them off to the side. Now we're going to come in here with a pry bar, a small little pry bar like this. We're going to come in right here. I hope you can see that okay, just like this. And we just hold slight pressure on it, just to get the caliper slide pins to move a little bit. Now you don't have to kill yourself, you're just going to hold slight pressure on it. You can see how it's sliding? The piston is pushing back into the bore. And the way, now the way you check these slide pins right here is you take the rotor I and mean the caliper and you slide it back and forth. If these slide freely, then we know that these slide pins are okay and they just need to be cleaned and lubricated. So you can see that this moves pretty decent. All right, um, let me reset the camera because I need to get on this side here and then we'll come right back. Okay, so now we, uh, we're going to take out these two 14 millimeter bolts right here. Now if you try to take these out, and as you're unscrewing it, this rotates right here. What you would do then is come in here with a thin wall um, wrench like that, and you could hold it while you rotate it. That's not the case here, but if it did happen, that's what you would do. All right, then we're going to do the same thing up top here. We're going to break them loose. And we're going to take out both of these bolts right up in the top right here. Don't lose these, we're going to need to use them again. Let's move you in a safe place over here. Now we're going to take our caliper. We're going to take our caliper off, we're going to hook it with a, with a piece of wire like this, and then we're just going to take it and lift it up and out of the way, just like this so that it doesn't really interfere with anything we're doing. Now in the back right here we have two 17 millimeter bolts. We're going to take out those 17 millimeters and then I'm going to show you what the noise was all about. Okay, now as you can see, or maybe you can't see, I'm not really sure, but you see that piece, that piece right there? That's the disc indicator, and you see how shiny that is? That's the piece that was touching into the rotor and squeaking. So we're going to put this off to the side now, we're going to come back to this. Now the rotor itself... The rotor itself is pretty rusty on there. But it doesn't really matter. We're going to be replacing it. You can either hit it on the face here, or you could bang it in the back there, or they make a special tool to pull it off. Normally, you could hit it a couple times and it comes right off. So uh, let's do that. Okay, take our rotor off. And you know, we talked about rust. You see how rusty this is right here? This is what we need to clean up inside here because on the new rotor, we want to make sure it has a nice clean surface in here. Alright, so now what we're going to do 
is we're going to come in here with our disc. Now, if you don't have a disc to clean this up with in here, you can use a scraper to get the rust off. Uh, it's a little bit of a pain in the rear end scraping it like that, so you probably want to use some emery cloth or whatever. But you want to make sure all of this rust in here is gone. So let me clean this all up, and once it's clean, we'll come right back. Once you have it all cleaned up, we're going to put the rotor back on. We did clean this off with some brake cleaner, just so you know. We're going to make sure that the two screws line up the way they're supposed to right here. And then we're going to screw the two screws back in. I put a little bit of nevices or anti-seize on the threads here so it goes in a little bit easier. And hopefully if we ever have to take them back out down the road, they'll come right back out without an issue. So now our road is nice and tight. Let's go to the bench and I'm going to show you how to do the, uh, the hardware kit. Okay, now these are the, the brake pads. We're going to just tap it like this to knock them out. And that's the indicator I was telling you about. You can see where it's touching right into it. Now it's giving the squealing noise. I'll just take this out. And then we're going to take out these clips. Just put your fins on it. You pull it. And it comes right off. Same thing here. Now. If this was rusted inside here, I don't know if you can see this, let's see. I don't know if you can see that okay, but if it was rusty inside here, if it was rusted inside here, we would actually clean this up with a file or emery cloth or whatever you have, but as you can see, it's fairly clean, so we don't have to worry about that. So, hey buddy, how you doing there? Come right back, okay, sorry about that. Okay. Okay, I'm going to take some of our silicone and we're going to put a little bit of silicone on every place that the brake pad is going to touch and where the hardware is going to reattach. And the way you put the hardware back on is just put it on like this and you push it in. Make sure it's pushed in right here and that's it. Same thing up here. Just push it in. Just make sure that down in here it's pushed in all the way right here so it doesn't touch into the rotor. All right, now we're going to lubricate every place that the brake pad is going to touch. Okay, and that's it. Our hardware is on. We're going to take out the slide pins right here. this and like this. And we're going to take a rag with some brake cleaner on it and we're going to clean off any of the of the uh, grease that's on there right now. We're going to lubricate it just a little bit and then we're going to put it right back in the same hole that it came out. Same thing on this side right here. A little bit of grease. You always want to put just a little bit. You don't want too much on there because you don't want to create a problem with too much grease either. Right? Now when you push this back in, make sure, see how this one is in all the way? Make sure that that boot pops back up on the top. See right? Like that. All right, now, the, uh, the uh, brake pads themselves are going to go into the mounting bracket. You want to always make sure that you put the correct pad on. Now you see the uh, brake pad itself, you see the indicators on this part of the shoe, you want to make sure you have it in the same location just like that. All right? The brake pad goes in like this. And we lubricated it so it slides nice and freely, just like that. And then we're going to put our other pad back in there. Now you can do this on the car, or you can do it here on the bench before you put the caliper, the mounting caliper bracket back on, but uh, it's sometimes easier doing it right here on the bench versus trying to do this on the car, especially on the back. Now we know that this pad here is the inner pad because you can see right here where that piston was touching and our indicator is right there. So that's how we know which pad goes on the inside and which pad goes on the outside. So let's go back up in the car and we'll continue. Okay. 
All right, now we're gonna take our uh, mounting bracket and we're gonna reattach it back on. You wanna make sure you catch both of the bolts first by hand before you go any further and tighten anything up. So we're just gonna push it in place now. We're gonna catch the bolts in the back of the uh, mounting bracket. Let me go look up the torque specs on these two bolts here and then we'll come right back. Now that we have the torque back in, we're going to take our caliper. We're going to bring it down over here. And as you can see, this piece here doesn't belong on there. We just got to take this off. It's really stuck in there. This must have been uh, glued for some reason. We'll take this off and throw it away. Now, you see this piston right here? This piston is pushed back in all the way. We did that with that pry bar before, that small little pry bar. Remember we took this piece here and we pushed the piston back in? But if it didn't push in all the way, what you could do is you put your brake pad back in here, you put a brake pad back in here, and you use something like this, a spreader like this, and you can push the, uh, the pads back into the bore. That's not the case here. We actually pushed it in before, so we're in good shape. Now, every place that this caliper is going to touch into the brake pad, you're going to put a slight bead of uh, silicone, just like this. It doesn't have to be a lot, just a little bit. Now, the brake pad is going to touch into the back over here, so we're going to lubricate that as well. All right, then we're going to take our caliper, put it back on. Now, I want to make, sh make sure, see this hose up here? See this brake hose right here? Make sure that that hose is not twisted around like this or anything like that. You want to make sure that the hose is nice and straight because I can't tell you how many times I've gotten cars into the shop and those hoses are twisted. All right, I'm going to take the bolts and we're going to screw them in by hand. Just catch them for now. Same thing here. And we'll screw it in as tight as we can by hand. We'll grab our 14 millimeter. And then we're going to tighten up these bolts in the back right here. Okay? Just snug them in. Nice and tight. Same thing here. Snug them in. Nice and tight. Now, if you're trying to tighten these bolts up here and these pins rotate, that's when you would take your thin wall uh, wrench, put it on there like that, and you can hold it and tighten it up. That's not the case here. It actually uh, came um, and tightened up nice. So, all right, let me just uh, take these gloves off and I'm gonna go through everything we did here and uh, we'll wrap it up and we'll get to the back then. Okay, so now we have our rotor on. We cleaned up the mounting hub where the rotor goes on to. We made sure all of that rust is off of there. It's nice and clean. We put our two Phillips head screws back in and we tightened those up. We lubricated them with some uh, anti-seize to keep it from uh, from giving a problem in the future. We installed our mounting bracket. We tightened up our 17 millimeter bolts here and as well down on the bottom over here. We put the new hardware in and we lubricated every place that the brake pad is going to touch, both here on the caliper and here on the mounting hardware. We tightened up those um, 14 millimeter bolts here and here and we lubricated the slide pins both here and here and we lubricated the inner part where the pad is going to touch into that, that piston. All right, that's it. We're all done. All right, now, um, you, if, again, if you were trying to tighten these bolts up here and this pin was rotating, that's when you would hold it with that, uh, I think it's a 17 or 18 millimeter wrench to keep it from rotating, and then you make sure these are nice and tight. So, all right, fronts are done. Let's go to the back, and uh, we'll continue in the back. Okay, now these are the back brakes, and they look very similar to the fronts, but they are a little bit different. We're going to do the exact same thing to try to loosen up these bolts right here. We're going to get in here with the driver. Remember we talked about that. You go on here with the driver and you hit it a couple of times and you're able to loosen it up and you're able to get it out with a regular screwdriver. We are going to have to take this caliper off right here. And this caliper, as you know, has the parking brake uh, built into it. 
So what we need to do is we need to take that piston and instead of pushing that piston back in, we need to rotate that piston back in and push at the same time. But I will show you how to do that. You do need a special tool to do this, but if you don't have the special tool, we can do it with just these. Long needle nose pliers, we can do it. I'll show you how that works. All right, we're gonna take out that 14 millimeter bolt there and there. We're gonna take the caliper off to the side and then we're going to take off this mounting bracket in the back over here. There's actually 14 millimeter here instead of being 17. There are 14. We're going to take off this one and one more down inside here. We're going to take that off and we'll take that mounting bracket off. We'll knock that rotor off. We'll clean up the hub itself and then we'll put it back together. So sounds easy, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, this is an example of what kind of tools you're going to need. You're going to need a hammer. You're going to need a very long pair of needle nose pliers. A ratchet, the longer extension you have, the better. A 14 millimeter socket, Phillips head. We may use a 14 millimeter wrench, and believe it or not, a 9 16th wrench. And I'll show you why in just a minute. Our driver, screwdriver, a file, a thin wall socket, I mean, a thin wall wrench. And under this, you're probably looking at this saying, what the heck is that for? But I'll show you what, what, that, what that's for also something to hold our rotor, our, our caliper up and out of the way so we're not leaving it hanging, or a driver if we need to, to get those screws out, and something to clean up the, uh, the hub itself. Some synthetic brake grease, and of course, a new rotor, and new brake pads. I don't want to show anybody's name, but that's the new brake pads. And this is the tool I'm telling you about to actually rotate the piston back in. Now, a lot of guys don't have this tool. I'm going to show you how to do it with a pair of needle nose pliers. But this tool here is actually goes into the, uh, to the piston of the caliper. And then you take that 9 16 wrench that I was showing you and you rotate this in. And what that does is by rotating it, it actually turns, it turns this piston back into the bore. So I'll show you how this works. And then I'm going to show you how to do it with just a regular set of, uh, with a regular Phillips head, um, I'm sorry, we, we, uh, I'm distracted, somebody's standing over here. Um, we're going to use a pair of needleless pliers like this to rotate that piston back in. So, uh, all right, let's get set up. Let me talk to this fellow here, and uh, we'll come right back. Now, remember, we talked about loosening up these screws right here. We're going to get in here with a driver, and we're going to just loosen it. And you can see, they're nice and tight. They don't come out. All right, so we're going to get on here with a driver. You're going to hold at a slight angle. It's not going to be perfectly straight, and you hit it pretty sharply. be able to get it out, but it's not. So we're going to do the same thing again. We'll hold it on here. It's still pretty tight. Okay, so we're going to take our driver now, and we're going to put a driver on here like this. And we're going to hold it. It takes it right out. Sometimes they're really tight. But this driver does come in very, very handy to get the screws out that are really too, too tight to get out with a Phillips head. Now, if by chance you try to get this out, and you strip out the screw right here, you can get in here with a chisel and you can just chisel it out and you can get it out. Sorry about that. We get a million telemarketers a day. All right, so now we have these two screws out here. We're going to take out these bolts in the back here. They're actually 14 millimeter. So we're going to get in here with a, uh, with a, a wrench. I'm sorry, with a, uh, with a, uh, a ratchet. Now, if you can't get in here with a ratchet, it's a little bit tight, you can get in here with a wrench as well and take it out just like that. Now, the bottom bolt here is a little bit tight to get in there, so you're probably going to use a wrench to get in here. I'll bring you in there, I'm going to show you why. You see right here? It's a little bit tighter to get in there. 
You know what? Maybe that's a good spot for you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You take it out like this. Now don't lose these because we are going to use these over again. Same thing on the top up here. We're going to take that out. And then we're going to take our Gonna take our caliper and just rotate it back and forth a little bit. And this is what I was telling you about. This is what I was telling you about where you have to rotate this piston back in. Now we have a tool that we use with this. This piece here would go in here like this. These little uh, pieces here go into those grooves right there. It goes in like this. Like that and then we would take this tool here like this and we put it in here like this and then we turn the piston back in I'm going to show you how to do it not using this I'm going to show you how to do it using a pair of needle nose pliers so uh, let me uh, let me do that I will tell you this it is a little more difficult doing it with these needle nose pliers versus trying to do it with the correct tool but either way what you're going to do is you're going to get in here what you're going to do is you have to get in here with the little scribe or a screwdriver and just make sure that that boot right there moves around and it's not binding because one thing we don't want to do is we don't want to twist this boot here. We don't want to twist that. So you want to make sure that it actually turns in. Take a pair of pliers like this. I'm sorry, take a pair of needle nose pliers and you rotate it like this. And you see it pushes in. It's a little tight going in, but if you keep constant pushing in and rotating, it'll go back in. It's nice and easy. And you see how the boot is now twisting? There's all different kind of tools that they make to do this. And we'll rotate it back in until we have these two lined up straight up and down the way that it was previously. All right, now, if that doesn't work, you can use the tool as made for it. It goes in here like this, and then you rotate it, and it turns that back in. But that's how you do it using the, uh, the other tool. Now, this one, normally I'll hang it with a hanger like this, but in this case it doesn't really matter because we have the parking brake is still attached to it, so we're not going to worry about that. But I am going to take out those 14 millimeter bolts in the back. on that mounting bracket up in there. There's two 14 millimeter bolts there, right there, and right there, and we're gonna take that off. a little bit because of all the uh, rust lip on here but we'll, uh, we don't have to worry about that this we're going to come back to momentarily and now to get this rotor off you can get in there with all different kinds of tools if you just hit it a couple of times it usually pops right off so let's do that all right we'll take this off Okay, now this hub right here, we have to clean this up so you can use your, uh, your scraper, a scraper like this to clean it up. You can use a disc like this to clean it up. 
You can use emery cloth, whatever you have. You want to make sure that all of that rust is off of there. So let me clean this up. Once it's clean, then we'll come right back. Okay, you always want to match up your rotor to make sure it's the same as the rotor that came off. You want to check the height here, and you want to also check the diameter of it just to make sure that the rotor is the exact same rotor as the one that came off. You'd be surprised how many times you get the wrong one. All right, so now we did clean off the face of this rotor with brake cleaner, this side as well as the other side, and now we're going to put it back onto the, uh, onto the car itself. We cleaned up the hub nice and clean inside here, and we're going to put our rotor back on, and we're going to put our two screws back in to hold it in place. Okay, make sure you line those screws up inside here, and we're going to put our rotor on. Our screws are lined up. We did put a little bit of, uh, of Nevisees on these, so we're not going to have an issue in the future. You want to catch everything loosely and then you can tighten it all up. Tight, nice and tight. All right. Okay. Now we are gonna take our rotor, uh, our mounting bracket, off to the side. We're gonna take these brake pads out, and we're gonna change the hardware right there. So let's continue with that. Okay. Now we're gonna take our brake pads out, and you can just tap them, and they come right out. Now it could be rusty. If it is rusty, it's no big deal. You can just bang it pretty hard. And it'll come right out anyway. All right. And then we take our hardware kit off like this. Just put your thumbs in it like that and push it and it comes right out. All right. Okay, now, if this was rusty inside here, if this was rusted inside here, you need to clean it off with a file like this or sandpaper or something. This is not rusty, so we're not going to have to worry about that but we are going to lubricate it before you put it back together. All right. Now our slide pins, we take our slide pins out just like this. There's, there's brake cleaner on my rag. You wipe off the slide pins, and then you put a little bit of lubricant back on the slide pin just like that. We put it back in, and we do one at a time because you want to make sure it goes back into the same location that it came out. Make sure that that rubber boot right there pops back up. Very important. And then we'll do the exact same thing on this one. Again, one at a time, because you don't want to mix them up. Just a little bit like this. And make sure it pushes all the way back down until it pops up. Right? Okay. Hey, buddy. How you doing, Ed? Okay, sorry about that. Okay, we just put this stuff off to the side like this. And then we're just going to take a little bit of lubricant. And I always put a little bit of, of the silicone underneath where the new uh, hardware is going to go. It keeps it from rusting in the future. And we're going to take this and push it on. We want to make sure that these little clips here pop in all the way where they belong. We want to make sure that these little clips here are in properly. Make sure they push down all the way. I'll show you what I'm doing in just a second. Okay. What I did is right inside here, where these little clips go right there, you want to make sure that they're pushed in flush all the way. That's what I was doing. All right. Now we take a little bit of the uh, silicone and put the silicone every place that the brake pad is going to touch, just like that. Okay, and now we know that you see this is where the inner brake pad was on the old brake shoe, brake pad. You want to make sure that we have this one in the same location too with the indicator in the, in the correct location. So we know this one here is the inner pad and we're just going to put it in like this. And you can see how it slides in there nice and freely. 
And then we're going to do the exact same thing on this side over here, just like this. Push it in, and it should it should push freely up and down, just the way that this one is right here. All right. So now our brake pads are in the way it's supposed to be with our hardware. Let's go back on the car, and we're going to catch these two bolts right back in here, and we'll tighten this up. All right. Mounting bracket, put it on like this, squeeze the brake pads together, like that. And now we're going to take our two bolts that we previously took out, and we're going to catch them both in the back. And you want to catch them both before you tighten anything up. We just snug these in loosely. Let me go look up the torque specs. We're going to torque them in, and then we'll come right back. Okay. All right. Now that we have uh, the bolts torqued in there, every place that this um, brake pad is going to touch, you put a slight bead of the silicone, like this, silicone brake grease. And now we take our caliper, put it on over the top like this, and we'll grab our bolts. And we're going to screw them both in by hand. We're going to do both of them caught first before you tighten anything up. We're going to screw it in just by hand for now. We'll do the same thing on the bottom here. You may have to push the caliper in slightly to get that bolt in. And now if you remember correctly, we used a 14 millimeter wrench to tighten this and loosen it. So we're going to tighten it up with the 14. Nice and tight. nice and tight. Now, if you're trying to tighten this bolt and this slide pin is rotating, that's when you will get in here with a, with a thin wall uh, wrench and hold it, and then you will get on here like this and tighten it up. That's not the case because it actually tightened up perfectly, but that's it. We're all done. All right, so let's, uh, let's go over this and uh, we'll make sure we're all set. Okay, uh, we cleaned up the, uh, the hub right here where the rotor is going on. Make sure all that rust is off underneath there. And we tightened that, uh, that up. We put these screws in here. We put Nevisees on here, here, and here. And we tightened up the two Phillips head. Uh, we cleaned our rotor off with some brake cleaner. We installed our mounting bracket. We tightened up those 14 millimeter bolts in the back here and down the bottom over here. We installed our new hardware kit here and lubricated every place that the brake pad is going to touch. We turned our piston back in as far as it would go, and we also made sure that we tightened up these 14 millimeter bolts right here. That's it, we're all set. Okay, I almost forgot to tell you too, is I, I do get a lot of emails from people uh, asking me if they need to bleed the brakes after they've done a brake job. Um, the only time you're gonna need to bleed the brakes is if you open up the um, the brake line and change a line. If you open up the bleeder valve for any reason, you could air into the system, um, or if you um, if you uh, were to change the caliper, then you would need to bleed the brakes out. Um, as far as underneath the hood, the uh, the cap on top of the reservoir, you can take that cap off. You don't need to. It's not going to really make a big deal uh, of, of pressure as you push that piston back in. But if you wanted to open it up, you could. I never do. Most of the time, I'll just check the fluid before it leaves and uh, make sure it's okay. Unless we bleed the brakes, then of course you'll need to fill it up. All right? Okay, so that's it. You're all set. We did the, uh, the front and the rear. We made sure that everything is back together the way it was. We made sure in our head that all of the bolts that we went over, that we made sure everything is tight the way it's supposed to be. Next thing you're going to do, obviously, put the wheels back on the vehicle. And before you drive it, you're going to get in the vehicle, you're going to pump the brake pedal several times, and you're going to notice that that brake pedal is going to go right to the floor. That's a perfectly normal thing to happen. Uh, you pump it three or four times, that sets the piston back out. Remember the pistons we pushed in? By pumping the brake pedal, it'll push the pistons back out until they come in contact with the brake pads, and the brake pad then comes in contact with the rotor. So it's normal for that pedal to be squishy or go down to the floor for four or five, six times while you pump it. And then after that, your pedal comes right up and you're all done, you're out the door and ready to go. All right, um, it is normal to get a little bit of a burning smell. 
Um, don't freak out about it. As I always tell all my customers, you're gonna get a little burning smell. No matter how much you clean off the rotors, you'll never get all of that grease off of there, whether it's in the, in the ribs of the rotor, or in this case here, it's in the back where the parking brake is, or whatever. You're always gonna have a little bit of smoke. Nothing to worry about. It'll burn off within a couple of miles of driving. And that's it. You're all set. All right. Any questions or comments or anybody wants to talk to me about anything or you need some advice, send me an email. I'll be more than happy to talk to anybody about anything. As always, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.